The Walt Disney Company calls its flagship theme park the happiest place on earth. But in the Disney universe, that may not be true if you're not white. And that history stretches back to the company's earliest days. Its late founder, Walt Disney, has been accused of racism, anti-Semitism, and misogyny. And in 1938, he invited a Nazi director to his studios one month after Kristallnacht, a violent pogrom against Germany's Jews. And then there's the Disney canon. You've probably noticed the vast amount of racist content Disney has produced for nearly a century now. We're talking beloved films and programs that have been consumed and idolized by generations of children, like Aladdin, Pocahontas, and Dumbo. And the racism, I mean, the list goes on. But times have changed, and Disney is desperately trying to transition from the happiest to the wokest place on Earth. So much so that it's causing a stir among US conservatives. So how did Disney go from racism to wokeness? And how is the company trying to redeem itself? Oh. Over the years, Disney has managed to offend almost everyone. Many of its classic films lean on racist imagery and stereotypes to tell the story. Just a few quick examples. In Disney's 1967 film, The Jungle Book, King Louis and his subjects are often regarded as anti-black caricatures. Louis is an orangutan who is king of the apes and famously tells Mowgli, I want to be like you. And the jazz singing ape and his subjects are the only ones not speaking British English. Instead, they talk in jive slang. And that's not the only example of damaging anti-black stereotypes in Disney films. Take a look at Dumbo. Created in 1941, there is a character called Jim Crow who shares his name with the laws that institutionalized racial segregation in the US South. And in the song of the roustabout, faceless black workers toil away to lyrics like, when we get our pay, we throw our money all away. The choice to have crows perform musical numbers also harkened back to minstrel shows. In them, white performers used blackface and shabby clothing to ridicule enslaved Africans on southern plantations. Talking Disney and slavery, its Song of the South, depicting life on post-Civil War plantations, was banned by the company itself in 2019. Disney said it, quote, wouldn't necessarily sit right or feel right to a number of people today. But the racist depictions aren't limited to black people. In the 1970 film The Aristocrats, the Siamese cat character Sean Gon features exaggerated Asian stereotypes such as slanted eyes and buck teeth. The film also features lyrics that mock the Chinese language and culture, such as Shanghai, Hong Kong, and Fu Yang. <laughs> oh, Jung Cookie, always wrong. <laughs> the cat sings in broken English, even though the voice actor is white, and he even plays the piano with chopsticks. Indigenous Americans are also depicted as racist caricatures in several classics, like the 1953 film Peter Pan. The Native American characters all speak in gibberish instead of an actual indigenous language. They smoke excessive amounts of pipe tobacco, which they offer to the children, and sing a song called What Made the Red Man Red. Disney has also been accused of attempting to whitewash the US genocide of Native Americans in Pocahontas, a love story between the native protagonist and John Smith, a white Englishman sent to help settle America, puts an end to the conflict between their two communities. But the one that really hit home for me was Aladdin. A line from the opening song, Arabian Nights, goes, quote, where they cut off your ear if they don't like your face, it's barbaric, but hey, it's hope. I was thinking my parents might cut my ears off if I tried to bring Jasmine to the yard. Turned out it was all racism, and Jasmine and her dad, not even on it like that, there's no magic carpets, and we're still taking the bus, fam. It's a madness. Before we move on from this lecture, though, I wanted to point out that racism hasn't been Disney's only issue. There were many more problematic messages in Disney's picture. One of the most shocking and timely is the amount of non-consensual kissing that resuscitates women, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and of course, Sleeping Beauty. To all the children out there, kisses don't bring girls back to life, and especially non-consensual ones. Stay in school, shit, boobs. That's how you end up in pen. But in recent years, Disney has done a lot to try to scrub its legacy of racism and even position itself as a woke company. It's removed scenes, changed song lyrics, and after the launch of its Disney Plus streaming platform, it's even issued advisory warnings on its classics. Disney has also changed some of its rides in its famed amusement parks. The Jungle Cruise, the Pirates of the Caribbean, and Splash Mountain were all altered to remove offensive depictions. Even the staff at the parks now have a more relaxed dress code. Disney has tried to encourage new, less Eurocentric stories like Moana, which highlights the rich cultures of Pacific Islanders. And racial equality in casting in movies like the recent adaptation of Aladdin has been welcomed by many advocates. Disney's bosses have almost tried to enforce its attempt at wokeness. 
Disney's employees undergo trainings on systematic racism, white privilege, white fragility, and white saviors. And Disney even launched identity-based affinity groups at its headquarters. Employees have attested to how seriously Disney has taken the change. But it's left many fans and commentators on the fence. Some people think Disney is not doing enough to tackle racism and jumping on this wokeness wave for business interests. And others see this wokeness as censorship and think Disney is doing too much. It's mad, right? All that racism, misogyny and what have you, and no one was saying anything. Now suddenly they're trying to fix some movies and rides and people are like, hold on, hold on. Freedom of expression, bro. So look, here's my two cents on the debacle. Disney's changes come at a time of racial and political tension in the US. Old wounds from the past around race, politics, sexism and poverty have bubbled to the surface. Too many issues ignored for too long and now there seems to be backlash to whatever goes on in the entertainment industry. Disney has chosen to take a stand and lean to one side. But this does not mean Disney has got everything right. Casting is still an issue. You can even see it in the new Aladdin. Jasmine is played by Naomi Scott, who is not Middle Eastern. There is a dire need for more black and Asian directors, not only in Disney, but Hollywood more widely. And parts of Disney's Mulan were filmed in China's Xinjiang province and the company was thanking the same government that imprisons more than one million Uyghur Muslims. After Moana was hailed a success, Disney went and released a Maui Halloween costume, a brown bodysuit covered in tattoos. As you can imagine, Pacific Islanders and fans spoke up. And not too long ago, a Muslim woman who used to work for Disney sued the company claiming her managers fired her after she requested to wear a headscarf at work. And so as you see, there are gaps, serious ones. But the point here is not to take a side, see who wins the wokeness contest and judge Disney's every action. The point here is to find a better way forward, especially as Disney's popularity with children seems unlikely to waver. Is it enough to preface films with warnings and change some rights? Why are mistakes still happening? And what about the millions of people who have been harmed by this content for decades? Racism, white privilege and their effects cannot simply be swept under the rug. They need to be explained to our kids. We must provide context and teach them how to recognize and resist racism. Disney should not take the easy way out. It must answer for its past transgressions because it would offer an opportunity for real growth, conversation and healing. If we don't get really uncomfortable and confront and hold ourselves accountable for the past, we won't be able to break the cycle of racism, discrimination and disunity. Also Disney, I reckon bro, free Disney Plus subscriptions to all minorities for the next 100 years. Seems fair, no? Guys, subscribe, like, so we can do this again and that. You know what I mean? Much love.